tell me about the idea stuff. Well, I uh, I listen to the radio. I like to stand in crowds and listen to people talk. You never know when they're going <coughs> to come up with a great song title. Right. Don't even know it. They don't, don't even know it. They're and just talking, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we were coming to Scottsboro from our house. Now, it used to be a ferry that crossed the Tennessee River. And uh, I and I hadn't been down there in a good while, and we was going to Scottsboro, the top of that mountain up there. And uh, you can see there's a bridge there, huge bridge. So I just simply said, I see a bridge. Thirty minutes later, he handed me the phone. I see a bridge. Oh wow! That is awesome. So uh, he. Uh, so between the two of you guys, you were the idea, idea guy. Yeah, that's great. Sometimes he would uh, say, uh, "He come to my house when his troubles appear." Did you get to our so he'd make oh, I discerned as being a D, right. so I'd make a D on my guitar, and he'd kick it off. I, I don't know where he's going, <laughs> but uh, I knew him so well that uh, the country music has, a, has its own pathway. If you sing this way, it has to go that way now. So I would follow him, singing the lead. I've never heard the melody yet. He sang the horn. <laughs> and if I missed it, he just wanted it up to the trash can. Spanning uh, that that ain't no good, I'll write another one. I see a and so when he left, pissed off, because I so dumb that I couldn't do that. <laughs> That sounds like me and my brother. Uh, I'd pick it up and I know that I was it, cross dark and lonely it. valleys. Where Two, three it three later, the path is so dim, I said, I I show me the tune that you had for and this great song. Rivers of trials and and then everything is fine. He'd, he'd, he'd show it at one time. He'd show but me the tune. It's the only way you can know it. That's right. But all he he was With faith, I shall look up and see a breeze. I yes, there story. will always be a way for my first escape. meeting with the real wheel. Yeah, the this is right. We auditioned a half a dozen times for Jim Diddy. I found out it. I, all he was was a uh, stage when manager. The I, we were fixed to quit. That's what my brother did. Yeah. Honestly, I was going to quit. And the gospel was doing pretty good, but you didn't get no dates. Right. Unless you only went churches. And we both felt that that was too close to begging. Right. You know, the, right. the preacher would say these boys could be up there in a year job somewhere making big money. Yeah. You know, just look at what you put in the plate. I'm going to pass this plate one more. Right. Right. And it was begging. That's all right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I said, I'm going to try one other thing before we quit. And uh, so I, we didn't have a phone. Blood lost the phone. And I went out and found a payphone on the street. And I called Ken Nelson. I said, Ken, do you know anybody at the Opry? So he said, I know the manager, Jack Stapp. And, uh, <laughs> That's great. Buddy's old boss. I, I told him, I said, we're, we're go if, if we can get on the Opry, we feel that that would uh, change our lifestyle. And uh, if we can't get on the Opry, we're going to quit. Would you call Mr. Stapp? since you know him. So he called Jack, and I don't know what Jack said, but it was probably negative. And Ken said, well, if you don't want them, the Ozark Jubilee does. I'd rather have them on the opera than to have them in Springfield. And uh, Jack said, no, oh, no, we don't need nobody else deserting Nashville going to Springfield. So tell them they're on this Friday. That was on a Tuesday. Well. Ari's wife packed up and went back to Knoxville. That's where her folks lived. And my wife packed up. Each of us had one boy. And it was three of us. And uh, Betty went back to Memphis where her family is. 
<clears throat> so we, got, we went to Nashville on a Friday morning on a bus because the girls had the cars. <laughs> and uh, but finally found our way to 7th and Union. We used to do the Friday night show in the in the uh, National Life building. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the third or fourth floor. Right. And, uh, but we had to meet everybody. So we met uh, Pelletary. We met uh, several secretaries. And finally, uh, we ended up, they carried us to uh, Jim Denny's office. And of course, he was just ignoring us. He'd say uh, uh, to his secretary, get me car Smith. Get, get me, uh, get me Web Pierce. Oh, that's get funny. Get me Minnie Pearl. And uh, this went on, seemed like forever, but I guess it's about 10 minutes. We were just sitting there. So I stood up and I knew that his, his patience was gone. It was good. He said, uh, well, Mr. Denny, we'll see you tonight on the Friday night opera. Denny pulled his glasses down along here and looked over him. Said, boys, you're in tall timber. You better shit and get it. I said, well, we have the saws, Mr. Denny. This show us where the woods are. And <laughs> that just burnt uh, Jim Denny up. And we we were never classified as Jim Denny friends. Right, from there on. And uh, he didn't like us either. Yeah. But thank God we didn't need him. You didn't need him. Mm -mm. But, uh, what year, what year was that? 1955. Wow. 20, wow. 28th day of February is, is the first date we worked. Wow. That's uh, the last day of February? Yeah. Wow. But uh, it just, our release at that time was Love Thy Neighbor as Thyself. And that's the one you played? And uh, Well, that's, oh yeah, you go with your latest. Right. We was kind of like Homer and Jethro. You asked Homer and Jethro, what's your favorite? song that you've ever done and they'd say our latest release <laughs> that's all they'd ever say it's funny but uh it's it's been it's been good i wouldn't have missed it for the world but i had a good job at the post office and while i was in korea i became a, a civil service regular not just a temporary job but the kind they couldn't fire you off of oh so uh, <laughs> 10 years ago or 15 years ago, I could have uh, been sitting on a creek bank drowned in red worms, but uh, that wasn't the way it's supposed to be. It didn't work out that way. Uh, so uh, it's been good and there's been bad. Yeah. And you know what? I don't know anybody, whatever occupation you're in, <laughs> you'll have ups and, and down. downs. And if you can't handle a down, there'll never be another up. Wow, I love so, that. Uh, it's uh, it, it's been a lot of a lot of pleasure to me. I hated to, more than anything to know that he was wiped out by a drunk driver. Yeah, and he had he had told his mom that when he got back from that date in Kansas City, he's going to buy him a tent and he's going to start preaching. <laughs> a lot of people believe he was called to preach. Right. And uh, so he lived a miserable life by uh, passing on that. Yeah. But uh, I think that the boss man upstairs knew he couldn't, he, he didn't have the strength to drop his drink. Right. And uh, so I just take him while he's, yeah. while he's where he's at. Wow. And, uh, that's the only thing that I could do. Because if, he, if, he would, if I would have been driving, the wreck would have never happened. Uh, it, maybe if he was driving, it wouldn't have happened. Who was driving? Man, Mr. Boxdale had he and his wife there. They had three young children, all of them under eight years old. And uh, he was driving, and I and his wife sitting in the back seat. And everybody got killed. Oh. All six of them. Oh.